There are over 340 games on Steam which are tagged as MMORPG. The thing about massively multiplayer games is that the more massively multiplayer they are, the more fun they tend to be. The genre was built on playing with other people, so what happens is 99% of the total MMO player base is mainly playing the top 10 or 20 games. So what about the other 320 MMOs on Steam? Well, the point of the series is to dive into some of those lesser known, lesser populated, sometimes even not populated, and overall more obscure MMOs. Today, we have one goal, and that is to find a diamond in the rough, something that stands out despite its lackluster or non-existent player base. Along the way, we may encounter some really bad game design, or some downright unplayable issues, or even just absurdity. But really quickly, I have to tell you guys about today's sponsor. You might have heard of them before, Dofus Touch. The ultimate mobile MMO is having a relaunch this year with some awesome changes. Seriously, no subscription, no loot boxes, no characters or zones to purchase, and it has seen massive success in Europe and Latin America. It's now launching dedicated English servers with over 56,000 pre-registrations so far, along with a completely changed and revamped new player experience. Dofus is no joke a solid contender in the MMO market, boasting the biggest world on mobile with over 10,000 explorable maps, along with thousands of items, monsters, and quests. Dofus features 15 different playable classes and a genuinely unique turn-based combat system that requires you to make strategic, tactical decisions in order to take down enemies. It has a fully player-driven economy that allows you to loot, craft, or trade powerful equipment, with over 20 different professions to master. Available on both iOS and Android, if you've been looking for the PC MMO experience but on mobile, with these new servers and a relaunch, I can't recommend Dofus enough. Use the QR code on the screen or my link in the description to not only help me out as a creator, but to get playing as soon as possible. Thanks again to Dofus for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's talk about the games that don't have any players. All right, first up. Up, Time Raiders, a mobile MMORPG that was ported to PC in 2023. Judging by some of the pictures, it looks like a mix between BDO and Lost Ark and every other generic Eastern MMO. With only 19 reviews scoring mostly negative, I figured I was in for quite the treat. After opening the game, you're met with an update and a really nice cutscene that plays in the background. The update actually takes a decent amount of time, and while you're waiting, the cutscene just loops over and over again. I finally finished the updates and made it into the game. I was greeted with a notice about server maintenance from the day prior, so it seems that this game is still being actively worked on, or at least maintained. Moving into character creation, I could not believe how eerily similar this looks to Black Desert's character creator. You're given a couple of preset looks which you can choose from, and is that the Joker? Okay, well, you guys know the drill. I'm going to attempt to use whatever means possible to make the ugliest character the game will allow me to. As it turns out, Time Raiders has a fantastic amount of customization options. I mean, seriously, there are five different options just for changing the shape of your cheekbones. We're gonna have some fun with this. Okay, we're getting somewhere. Oh my god, this went from comical to almost scary. What have I done? <laughs> what is this abomination? I thought we were playing an MMO, not a horror game. This is grotesque. Well, let's get into it. Unfortunately, when I tried to log into the game, it crashed. After a quick restart, it told me that my account had been logged in elsewhere and cannot be forced online. Well, I decided to wait a bit and try again. Maybe it will work this time. This seems promising. Perfect! You're met with another pretty nicely done cutscene. I'm genuinely always impressed by some of the graphical work put into these otherwise not so great and not so popular MMOs. I was met with a couple of different camera options, 2.5D and 3D. Interesting. I chose 3D. Now, the user interface is so similar to Lost Ark, even down to the font being used, that if you had shown me a screenshot of the game for a really brief second, I probably would have guessed that it actually was Lost Ark. I followed the main story prompts and used an action key to cross this thin ledge. Movement felt really bad. You can click and hold to walk in a direction, or you can use WASD, but it seems like neither of them really work properly, and I was constantly readjusting just to get where I wanted to go. The game prompted me to this chest where you can choose a weapon, but really, it's how you choose your class. There are three archetypes, Blademaster, Gunslinger, and Sage, which each have two subclasses to choose from. I chose the Sharpshooter class and was met with this ridiculously badass cutscene. 
Then I accidentally clicked through the tutorial screen showing me how to participate in combat, and then tried everything in my power to fight these beetles, but I couldn't figure out how to attack. Right click didn't work, I probably attempted to press half the buttons on my keyboard, and I still couldn't figure out how to retaliate. I was getting absolutely smacked by these beetles and there was nothing I could do. Eventually, for some reason, right clicking then started to work and the beetles dropped me some new gloves. I got two new abilities. Shift, which is supposed to jump me to the chosen area, but the animation is broken so you kind of just teleport, and also my number one, which is an AoE effect. No, like the shift jump animation is really broken though. Afterwards, I was faced against the giant blood beetle boss fight. But first, I had to fend off some of these smaller beetles here. After making quick work of the smaller beetles, I tried to get over to the beetle boss, but the game wouldn't let me. Using my shift jump ability, I kind of managed to glitch into the area. I made quick work of the beetle boss, but it appeared it wouldn't let me progress. According to my quest tracker, I still had a small beetle to kill. And now I'm stuck over here and can't make it back to the small beetle. Oh, okay, there we go. But now the game wants me to kill the beetle boss that I already killed. And you can't progress any further without slaying the beetle boss, so I decided to wait. Maybe he respawns. So I waited, and I waited some more. Okay, maybe I'll try logging out and back in. There we go! <laughs> and after a few cutscenes, I was taken to the main game and introduced to this palace. Wait, is that couch over there not loading in? Yeah, no, that couch's textures are definitely not loading in. Alright, I think I've seen enough of Time Raiders. All in all, I'm giving Time Raiders a D. My reasoning is the detailed character creation screen is actually honestly deserving of a B or an A, but the gameplay is a definite F. So, right in the middle. D. Alright, next up we have Blade Mistress. This was an MMO that was recommended in some of the comments on my last video. Originally released in 2002, the game looks exceptionally old. The graphics are really reminiscent of the original EverQuest, and the description says it's an old-school, skilling and crafting styled game. With 18 mixed reviews, someone mentioned it had nostalgic charm. Let's find out. There are quite a few character creation slots. Interestingly enough, and in theme with the title of the game, Blade Mistress, you cannot choose to be a male character. You can only be a female. I've seen gender-locked classes before, but this takes gender-locking to a new level. Your face, shirt, and pants all have a few different styles in which you can choose from, and each of them has a RGB slider to change around the colors. I had some fun dancing to some techno beats while switching through the facial presets. Listen, this still looks better than my character in Time Raiders, okay? After I was satisfied with the customization of my Blade Mistress, I took a look at some of the attribute points. You can spec into physical, magical, creative, or beast. I decided to go with a healthy mix of physical and magical. Now, let's get into the actual game. What in the world am I looking at? What is this noise? Are those other players? Why is this thing named Punching Bag? Is it a demon? You know, sometimes in these older games I can at least understand what the developers were shooting for. I can see the intention behind some of the decisions. Here. I'm lost. I'm completely and utterly lost. I tried speaking to some of these other players, if that's what they actually were, but no one responded to me. It appears the game works on a grid system, as you can see those black lines on the ground indicate which section you're standing in. And using WASD, you can just press one of those buttons in the direction you want to go, and your character will begin walking into the next section of the grid. Some sections had merchants, and some appeared to have little shacks, though I couldn't figure out how to interact with them. So I explored a bit, I got into a fight with a... Silithus? And it seemed like I was winning, but apparently he one-shot me, and then I was teleported back to the home square. I tried to trade with some of the other players in the area, Tess here appeared to be AFK, and so did all of the people who were fighting the demon known as Punching Bag. This was beginning to feel like some sort of lucid dream, where I know my intentions, but the world around me just doesn't react the way you would expect it to. This felt like if a primitive version of AI were to attempt to make an MMORPG. I decided to really explore this time and just see how far I could go. I saw some minotaurs and some tigers, there were some giant spiders as well, and I came across a beach which had a giant purple dragon. At some point I found this giant rock sticking out of the ground, and upon closer inspection it appeared to be some sort of dungeon. 
The EverQuest 1 vibes were out of control at this point. I tried to fight this spirit golem, but once again, I was no match for this NPC, and I was teleported back home beside our good friend, Punching Bag. Afterwards, I fought some minotaurs, which I was actually able to defeat, and managed to get some loot. After selling the loot to a merchant, I still really had no idea what the point of this game was, or how to progress, or how to get weapons, or how to craft, but... It's a cool relic of the past. I'm actually pretty happy I was able to experience this game. There's something special about stepping into such an old game and then comparing that to the games that exist now to see how far they've come. Overall, I'm gonna have to give Blade Mistress a D plus. It's not a good game by any stretch of today's standards, but at the same time, it's a historical relic that we still have the privilege to look back on. And it really does have that nostalgic late 90s, early 2000s feel. Next up, we have Ethereal Echoes of Yore. This is a game that actually received a fair amount of attention at launch. But according to some of the reviews, the launch might have been so catastrophically bad that everyone actually quit. The game has over 900 reviews on Steam, scoring mostly negative, but these days it averages around 6 players online at any given time. Bear in mind, it was released in 2023. The actual aesthetic of the game, judging from the store page, actually looks fantastic. So, let's find out. Alright, we're in. Let's take a look at character creation. I'm quite partial to the blocky, sort of cartoony 3D graphics that are featured here. I'm not sure why they're so simple, but they have a certain charm as well. When I was happy with my character's appearance, I was asked to choose a starting vocation. There are 20 different playable classes, separated into 6 different genres. I ended up choosing a Spellblade, because I always choose Spellblade in games, if it's available. Can we talk about that? Not enough games have a good Spellblade class. That's unfortunate. After a quick loading screen, I was welcomed into the game and prompted with a few different tutorial steps. I mean, the game looks absolutely fantastic. It's unique and charming in its own way. Although, I have to say, the minimap could definitely use some work. It's like if you hired a team of professional, well-respected artists to make the entire game, but the minimap was outsourced to a local preschool class. By right-clicking on this apple tree, I was able to gather some apples as the tutorial required from me. Movement in this game also works on a grid system, but this one's more similar to RuneScape tiles. Each square is a spot that you can stand on. I was told to find the kitchen so I could cook with these newly acquired apples, so I decided to bring up the in-game map to find out where the kitchen was. And oh boy. How does the game look this impressive and this is the map? The map looks like a game of Pong on LSD. It looks like if Pac-Man wasn't hungry. It looks like Cyberpunk on release. I didn't realize the RuneScape Classic servers were back online. Anyway, the game had me venture to Old Sternbrand, who had a bit of a spider infestation in his attic. Combat isn't the worst, but it could use some work. My abilities didn't really feel too good, and the cast time felt way too long, and it mostly felt like an auto-attack simulator. Of course, it's hard to make all of these judgments at the beginning of the game, maybe it gets better later on. After slaying all the spiders, I was able to choose between a new weapon or some pants. So I chose the pants. Nice. I decided to explore the user interface a bit. I found a few menus detailing things about my character, including his level in certain skills like cooking and arcane magic. I also ended up finding a construction page. Apparently, given that you have the supplies in the construction level, you can actually just build structures. I tried a few times to build these, but the game kept saying that I couldn't build in this area. Still, I could really see this being a cool and unique system, probably inspired a little bit by Fortnite. I made it to the next town over, where I was prompted to visit the Mage Tower in order to continue in a story quest related to my class. The game unfortunately does a very poor job of explaining actually where you need to go. There's no quest indicators on the map or minimap, and sometimes the quest text doesn't even fully tell you where you need to go. But fortunately, I was able to find my way around anyway. For example, after exploring the Mage Tower, I met up with Galahan, and he told me I need to go to a clearing in the Grove. But I really had no clue where the grove was, and the NPC, nor the quest text, or the map indicated where it was either. Luckily, through some traveling and an absolute fluke of me going back to the city that I had teleported to the Mage Tower from, I went into the northern forest and found the grove. This initiated a boss fight against this alpha wolf, where I stood absolutely no chance. I got completely destroyed. 
And that's where I decided to call it. Ethereal of Yore gets a B+. It has the most potential out of any game I've played in these videos. It has the entire groundwork for a truly unique and amazing MMO. A little bit of love, a little bit of care with some quality of life updates and definitely a better mini-map, and I can see this game really taking off. Next up, we have an interesting one. Another game that was heavily requested in my comments section, Repels. The store page had some decent looking 3D graphics reminiscent of the later 2000s era of games, which makes sense because the original version of the game was released in 2009. With only 94 mixed reviews, including someone who mentioned that prior to playing Repels, he had a small PP, no friends, and depression. That's about all the persuasion I needed to jump into the game. Unfortunately, if you download the version off Steam, you're going to need to be fluent in Russian in order to make any sense of it. And I was all out of vodka. So instead, I found a US English version online. Much better. It appears there are three separate class archetypes, Dark Magic, Earth Magic, and Divine Magic. But upon further inspection into all of these archetypes, there is an absurd amount of different classes that you can choose from. For example, there are 14 different classes ranging from Rogue to Beastmaster, and that's just within the Earth Magic archetype. I ended up choosing to be an Assassin, which is apparently a mix of a Warrior and a Hunter. Interesting. Character customization has quite a few options, but unfortunately lacks the ability to make your character plain ugly. That's always minus a few points in my book, but there's enough customization for you to make your character feel unique. And boom, I was in the game and greeted with an extremely chaotic and messy user interface. After a few minutes of technical difficulties and making no progress in terms of getting the game to appear nicer, I kind of just gave up and decided to go with it. Well, I would have loved to just go with it, but my character seemingly can't move very fast. Why am I moving so slow? What is happening? Ah, apparently I was carrying more than the maximum allowed weight. That's an interesting problem for a brand new player to have to deal with. Fortunately, in my inventory, I had a backpack which increased my carrying weight. I also found wings, equipable wings, okay? Click to move or WASD, whichever you prefer, I made my way to the first quest giver who had me slay a few young opids. The experience was ridiculously fast and before I knew it, I was already level 5. A notification flashed on top of the screen saying that a deathmatch will begin soon, which was confusing to me as I had not opted into any sort of deathmatch, but afterwards nothing happened, so I still don't know what that notification was actually about. After completing another quest, I was given the option of choosing a new weapon as a reward. I decided to try something completely different and grabbed a crossbow. Since I was a hunter-warrior mix, I should be able to use ranged weapons as well. And to my surprise, the crossbow was pretty good too. I took a look at the world map to figure out where I needed to go, but once again, this was a game that really didn't give you enough direction and information for you to decide where you need to go. I made my way over to this tower while fighting anything that stood in my way. I was really surprised at the amount of action bars and menu buttons that were available at the bottom of the screen. I didn't really feel like immersing myself into every user interface in order to figure out what is undoubtedly a more complicated UI than it needs to be. Afterwards, I was told to go to Trainee Town. While there, I learned about Mount Rental. You can basically purchase a mount for a certain amount of time, and when that time reaches zero, you'll no longer have access to that mount. I rented a Young Ornitho for 1100 R. Ours? And it's basically what happens if you mix a dragon with a chicken, but also a chocobo. However, I gotta say, it did dramatically increase my movement speed, which was nice. Also, as it was a bird without wings and I was a human with wings, I really feel like I should have been able to fly. But hey, it's an older game, I can be a bit more forgiving in my critique. I went to hand in some more fetch quests and I was given an important option between two quest rewards. Spicy noodles or cheap shrimp sushi. Now, spicy noodles tend to give me heartburn, so I went with the sushi. Probably better to stay away from those prepackaged noodles anyway, as they're chock full of sodium. Nice, that got me to level 10. Anyway, I wandered around some more, discovered a few new monsters, I think I got to level 11, but honestly, I couldn't figure out the point of this game. There's nothing really blatantly or inherently wrong with it, I was just bored. There was nothing really compelling enough to keep my attention. So, Repels, you get a C. Right in the middle. Nothing to write home about, nothing super wrong with the game, it's just kind of boring. And finally, we have a special one. This one caught my attention after being featured in a Josh Strife Hayes video a few years prior. 
I'll leave a link to his video if you want to watch a much more in-depth review of Underlight. This is a strange one because it's a game that exists solely for the purpose of role-playing. In fact, it's impossible to progress farther into the game unless other more powerful and stronger players allow you to. Now, I'm sure the game saw a bit of a resurgence after Josh's video, however, it's now been two years since then, and I was wondering if anyone was even online in this old world. Originally released in 1998, it was put on Steam in 2018 and has over 100 mixed reviews. Some heavily positive reviews from older players, and some pretty rough reviews from people who don't really understand why you need to roleplay. And yes, that's literally in the game rules, you have to roleplay. A massive 128 megabytes later, and I was ready to go. So one super unique thing about Underlight is character creation is actually done on a separate web page. You can choose between four different classes, a gatekeeper, a dream seer, as well as a soul master and fate sender. Very ominous names. I chose to be a soul master because it sounded badass. You then log into that specific character using a password and its username with the game's launcher. Some technical difficulties and there we go. The game's screen is actually quite small on a modern desktop. You have your inventory and menus surrounding the actual game and you can interact with your inventory and other things in your menus. I tried to use some of these readmes that I had in my inventory, but the game told me that I must have entered a threshold or a house to do so. Remember earlier when I was playing Blade Mistress and I mentioned how confused I felt at what the point of this game was? Well, that's much the same confusion that I had now. What the heck is this game? I managed to find a couple of portals, and after attempting every which way to actually use and go through the portal, I almost gave up. I mean, I tried walking, I tried pressing every combination of buttons I could think of, but then, in a moment of pure luck, I pressed the F key, which is how you interact with portals. I was transported to this new place, I found a fountain, there were some items laying on the ground, which I picked up, but I had no idea what to do with them. A chaos well, a gatekeeper chakram, I feel so lost. Then I heard a strange noise, and even footsteps. <laughs> No shot, I found another player. <laughs> this guy's name was Basil. Now, I've never really participated in genuine role-playing in a video game before, but considering it was part of the rules of this game, I tried my best. I said, hello, who are you? His name was Basil. I asked him how long he's been here, and he said he's been playing for a few months on and off. He sensed that I was a soul master, and I replied that indeed, I am a master of souls. I asked him if he had any advice for me, and he explained a few of the different items on the ground, and how their color correlates to the elemental property that they harness, and using these items help keep up a shield to our avatar. I wish I had the cojones to explain to Basil that everything he was telling me was still just basically gibberish and going in one ear and out the other, but instead I just said, hmm, interesting. Afterwards, Basil explained nightmares to me, basically NPCs that you can defeat for energy to gain orbits, which can be used as experience. I told Basil that I would try and steer clear of these nightmares before I learned more about the game, and he said that that would be wise. As soon as he was gone, I immediately made my way to attempt to find my first nightmare. I hit a couple of dead ends going through a maze of portals, but eventually I entered a plane in which combat was enabled. And there it was, the nightmare. I quickly realized I should have actually asked Basil how combat works in this game. I tried spam clicking and pressing F and many other keys, but unfortunately, I don't think I did any damage to the Nightmare who made quick and easy work of me. Either way, this was a super cool experience. Underlight is like exactly what you would expect between the era of multi-user dungeon and MMO. It's an old testament to D&D and role-playing, and the fact that it's 2024, and within 10 minutes of playing, I had already come across another player, was just insane. Even if you're not really interested in playing this game, once again, it's one of those cool relics of the past that we can look back on and enjoy, even just for a short time. Underlight, you get a B from me. I mean, the game is objectively awful by today's standards. Not just relying on others, but depending on others to progress is a hilariously bad system. However, it's completely unique. And like I said, this series is all about finding the diamond in the rough. 
So our winner for today's obscure MMOs with no players is none other than Ethereal of Yore with a B+. Sure, the game needs some work and it's rough around the edges, but I could see massive potential in this game. It has the groundwork to be a really unique MMO with RuneScape style progression and super charming and interesting graphics. I would love to revisit this game in a few years and see if it's doing any better. As for last place, that's going to be Time Raiders with a D. Despite having some of the best character customization I've ever had the opportunity to experience, the rest of the game is generic, buggy, copy-paste, and overall feels extremely uninspired. But anyway folks, I want to say a massive thank you to everyone who made it to the end of the video. Don't forget, a like and a subscription helps me out a lot. And if you really enjoyed the video, consider becoming a channel member. Leave some comments letting me know other MMOs you would like to see me try in this series, and I will catch you all in the next one. Later.